to the Edges Grove Edges podcast. We're a group of students working toward helping you learn about gardening and food. And thanks to our sponsors at the Green Initiative Fund and Edgy Compass at UC Davis for supporting our work. We are grateful for your support. This podcast is a continuation of our food and basic needs discussions. I am your host, Stephanie Sai, and I use she, her, and they, them pronouns. And today we're talking about community fridges. And I'm not talking about your average fridge. These are known as fridges, spelled F-R-E-E-D-G-E. These fridges are a part of a sharing mechanism aiming to reduce food insecurity and food waste, thus building a stronger community, according to the fridge.org website. They promote equal access to healthy food through the installation of community fridges or public refrigerators that are used to share food and ideas at the neighborhood level. I am joined by my local Fridge representatives, Ania and Sabrina, to talk all about the Fridges around Davis and what they do. Okay, so we'll start with your introductions. Uh, What is your name and what pronouns do you prefer? Hi, my name is Ania Kavietsky and I use she, her pronouns. Hi, I'm Sabrina Denton and I use she or her pronouns as well. Um, Anya and I are both part of the Fridge and Night Market, which in Davis, we do a lot of different stuff. Fridge also does things um, across the US. We support other community fridge products, but what we do here in Davis, we have some community fridges, which are called the Fridges. Right now we've got about five of them here in Davis that anyone can access at any time. And Um, the night market kind of works in tandem with that as the fridges in Yolo County aren't allowed to have cooked foods in them. So what the night market does is it's a team of volunteers that will go to restaurants around closing time and pick up any leftover food that wasn't sold. And this food represents a huge investment of time and resources. But um, if it just gets thrown away, all of that is wasted, but it's still delicious food that people can eat. So we bike it over to Central Park and then give it away to whoever would like to eat some of it. And we have a lot more like produce and bread that goes to the fridges. There's a lot of different resource distribution that goes on. And in general, we try to increase food security, decrease food waste and support sustainability however we can with a very community focused mindset. Cool, cool. Um, I've, mm. I've visited a couple of free, uh, the fridges before, and they look so cool now. <laughs> They're like really decorated. Yeah, there's definitely a wide variety in fridge decoration. Some of the ones here in Davis are pretty complicated. Um, we've got some really cool LEDs. People should definitely go check them out. Pretty fun. Um, but any anybody can start their own fridge. It could just be a refrigerator. Sometimes they're painted, sometimes just a sign saying this is a community fridge or this is a fridge. But there's there's a wide variety, but the ones in Davis are definitely pretty cool to go check out. Yeah. <laughs> Very artsy. Anya, did you want to add anything about Night Market? No, I think you did a really good summary. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I, I really hit the point of, I was, I was going to ask you earlier about like if anyone could set up their own fridge and um, I, I didn't know that it, like just anyone could start one up. Is there any um, like requirements for setting up a fridge for community use? Um, one thing that can be a little bit tricky with community fridges is it varies from county to county and area to area. In general, a lot of the food safety laws are set up for restaurants and businesses and aren't really at the level of community fridges because they're, they're a community effort. And so when you try to regulate that the same way you regulate a business, a lot of the laws just really don't make sense. And things like, oh, if you're gonna sell this, it's like, okay, we're not selling anything. So that law, like, what do we do with that? Um, but all um, food donation is protected nationally with the Good Samaritan Food Act. And I believe there's a stipulation in there that it's all protected. Sorry, if it goes through a nonprofit, I know it is protected and I need to brush up actually, but um, there's just the understanding that as long as you're not doing anything malicious and you are doing everything like above board, you're not knowingly providing bad food to people, then that's cool. You're helping get food to people that are going to eat it. And that's a good thing, similar to if you find someone passed out on the side of the road and try to help do CPR. 
but with food, which is why it's the Good Samaritan Food Act. Um, and the Good Samaritan Act is the CPR one. I think I've got off track there. <laughs> to clarify, the law Sabrina was referring to is the Good Samaritan Food Donation Act of 1996. You can learn more about this on www.usda.gov forward slash food loss and waste forward slash donating. But mm -hmm. so it, it does vary from county to county what the like legal requirements are. And in Yolo County, we can't have cooked foods. Some areas they do let you. Um, but we think of fridge and community fridges in a very like this is a community thing that should be decided by the community. So anybody can like put their own fridge up and they may have some legal requirements to go through through their county. But in general, yeah, anybody can set it up. You just need a refrigerator. A shed is usually recommended just to protect it from rain and sunlight and different things like that. But you can get started pretty easily and anybody can access it. If it's outside, then you don't really need to have hours or anything. Or if it's in a business, then obviously people can access it whenever that business is open. But in general, it's very it's supposed to be very open and welcoming. And the goal is to reduce food waste and increase food security. So anybody that wants to take this food and eat it should. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. So do you happen to know any resources we could refer to if I wanted to start a fridge and I wasn't like really sure where to start? We do have some guides on our website, freege.org. Um, that can be a good place to start. We are working on getting more up, so there'll be more things on the website soon. But that's got some good resources, and there's a lot of different groups. Like on Facebook, we have a Facebook group for different community fridge organizers. That's a good place to share resources. Um, and we even have a micro-grant program um, where we help give people some money if they're buying wood to build a shed or if they're finding a used refrigerator. Usually there's pretty cheap ones on Craigslist. Um, on campus, there's specific requirements. So those fridges are a little bit different because it's a needs to be a commercial refrigerator, not just a dorm fridge. But for most places, if you're just putting a small fridge up, a dorm fridge is fine. And there's definitely lots of resources um, available. And I think that we've got contacts on the website as well. If people have other questions that they want to ask us, always happy to chat. Cool. I didn't actually know about the website. I should probably take a look at that later. Um, at least in terms of the fridge programs on campus, um, items inside like open to anyone or is it mostly for students? There's definitely a lot of access for students because those are, that's who's on campus. It's pretty location dependent. Um, and the fridges on campus are through a partnership with uh, the Aggie Compass. And we've had support from TGIF as well. So it's definitely on campus is kind of a student focus, but anybody on campus who's walking by is welcome to grab anything or to donate food. Um, it, that is kind of one of the things of free, just anybody can be there, but because the ones that are on campus, you're more likely to have students accessing it. There's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of food insecurity within students, so it's, it's good to have as many resources. And it, it can be difficult to accept help. There's a lot of stigma around food insecurity in our society, and one of the things that Fridge and Night Market do is trying to be really welcoming, and anybody who wants this food is welcome to have some. Mm -hmm. I agree, like the, the fridge definitely makes things a lot more approachable, especially when they're all over campus, um, I think. Um, so for the locations in the MU and the silo on campus, are there any other areas? On campus right now, those are the only two. We probably will have a third one sometime in the next uh, six months or so. But for now, the silo and the MU are the on-campus locations. There is one also at the Davis Food Co-op, which is downtown, so not too far from campus. Um, and there's a couple more in Davis that are also on our website. We have a little fridge location map. Maybe we should mention those. So there's one in West Davis. I forget where. Do you remember? Lucena Court. I might be pronouncing mm -hmm. that wrong, but yeah, it's in the Mace Ranch area. 
and um, there is going to be one at the Bike Collective starting tomorrow, which is really exciting, which is on 4th and L. Ooh, cool. And I think that's it, right? There's no more fridges in Davis. It's like the two campus ones, co-op one, West Davis, and Bike Collective. I think you're right. I Somehow I always seem to forget one, but I believe that's all of them in Davis right now. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's, there's going to be more. one near the high school, right? Yes. That one yeah. is in progress as well. There's going to be yeah. one. It'll be a little bit like central North Davis by the Davis High School. Yeah. But that one is not up upcoming. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Huh, so with so many fridges to, to look after, um, I'd imagine there'd be some people who might be worried about like the cleanliness or f- the food safety of the fridges. Um, how, how would you address those concerns? Um, we do have volunteers that go and check the fridges and clean them out and make sure there's nothing there. The flow of food does tend to keep things rotating pretty fast so we don't have too many issues with like if something were to go bad it gets removed pretty quickly and so that's not really an issue and if anybody wants to volunteer and would like to help keep our fridges clean that's great I'm always welcome to help but yeah with our team of volunteers we definitely try to keep an eye on all that yeah that's good hopefully people won't get too scared away just because it's a a public fridge it's all it's all food in there. If you want to take your produce home and wash it, that's always a good idea. I mean, I always like wash my produce, even if I'm getting it at the farmer's market or anything. But um, yeah, it's just food. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. And like Sabrina said, there's like a pretty decent flow of food and people coming to check it. So like the night market volunteers also usually leave the fridges, the campus ones and the co-op one at least. Um, So they check it also when they're doing that and can usually like check if there's anything in there that should go away. So yeah, I I think, I mean, you know, at your own risk, but it's pretty, pretty safe. Not really a risk. Mm -hmm. Obviously common sense applies in all situations, but there's not (laughs) in getting some food. And then I think going back to your earlier question about like student access, night market does tend to be a pretty good mix of community and student. Fridge and night market both are open to anyone. The fridge is on campus. There's definitely a lot of students that use those, but they're also for community members and anybody that wants food should feel free to stop by a fridge at any time. That's the beauty of them being outdoors. They are 24 seven. There's usually something in there and night market is every weeknight now. And you can always stop by and get some nice food. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess another thing I wanted to ask is like, have there been any like cool finds that you've seen inside the fridges? Ooh, interesting question. Hmm. There is a large variety of things that show up. I do some of the recoveries at the farmer's market. So I often am loading fridges from time to time. And there's always lots of like variety in what goes in there. There's been some really good herbs. A couple of weeks ago, there was a bunch of strawberries and I, I took a couple home and made some jam that was really good. Oh yeah, the herbs. I really, yeah, herbs are a good find. The co-op fridge has some really good stuff sometimes because it's right next to the co-op mm-hmm. yeah I remember like one of my friends found like this apple pie in the fridge one time I think it was by the co-op Ooh. as well nice yeah um it is nice having the glass door refrigerators that you can kind of just peek in while you walk by and like oh that looks good let me grab that <laughs> yeah yeah the glass doors really do help Another thing I wanted to ask was, um, have any of your programs or um, like services been affected by COVID-19? Since I know there's a lot of like challenging things that happened um, across the board for pretty much everyone. So I was wondering if, if things have changed. Yeah, night market's changed. Um, it used to be a party. Now it's not a party. Well, not so much anymore. But um, we used to like set up at the um, the tables at Central Park and people could just like gather and we just set out the food there 
and people would just kind of come over and look at what was there and then just kind of hang out and eat it. And there was always music and stuff. And now it's more like we put the food on this like wall. So it's more like a counter. And uh, then people come like one by one and they line up and we like hand things to them with tongs or like spoons or, and we wear gloves, we wear masks obviously. And um, it's very, it's very, it's like more of a, I don't know, the vibe is more like a line. (laughs) It's not like a gathering anymore. But maybe we'll change that again now, now that things are opening up. But yeah, so that was a change we saw. I think I visited the night market once pre-pandemic. It was really cool. There's like, I, I remember like a bunch of neon lights and it's like, yeah, very much like a picnic. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I mean, it's still great, but it, now it's just kind of like, oh, you 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 show up at the counter and you get handed this food and um, we just tell people what, what is there and they choose and then you just take it away. And there's no like gathering or socializing really um, with the community members, which was part of what made it so cool before. Um, but yeah, I mean, we still recover food and give it away. So I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> it's actually been- doing- we do still have the lights and music, so it's a. Uh, I think it's pretty fun, even if you're just waiting for your turn to come up and see what we've got. Yeah, for so sure. So it's definitely not the same vibe as it used to be when everybody would gather a little bit more. Yeah, the people behind the counter handing out the food are definitely still dancing <laughs> and playing music, but um, yeah. But also at the same time, during pandemic, it's been kind of cool to see um like the crowd change too um so it stopped being as many just students and undergrads and it was more also community members and people with like families and you know like people who were really struggling and um like you could tell that they really needed it um so and and we also expanded so we used to just do one day and now we're doing five days monday through friday 9 to 11 p.m. So, yeah, I mean, it's not been all bad. We've all also gotten new businesses. So it's, you know, kind of a mix. Uh, so there's like an increased, you've noticed an increased need in um, food? Yeah. And, mo- yeah, I don't know. If there, I think just also the population or like the, the people who are approaching night market kind of changed that demographic. Um, I think maybe the previous vibe was a bit intimidating to some, I don't know, like older folks or, you know, like family member or, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, but now it's, it's very, like, it's more sterile and, and like calmer, I guess. So, so I think different people approach it. Yeah. I think another thing to consider is very many students weren't in Davis anymore when the true. pandemic that is very started. True. So as we have students returning in the fall, we may see a lot more students again. Yeah, yeah. And we welcome them. Come on down, check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Students are great, especially (laughs) students love the bread. (laughs) And we have so much bread. There is a lot of bread. Yes, you can do so much. And bagels and pastries. Oh, yes. And rice. And rice. Pre-cooked rice. You don't even have to cook it. It's cooked for you. Although you can make it into rice pudding. Or risotto. You can do so many things with the rice. I use it all the time. Or fried rice. Yes, lots of options. Many options. Nice. It does sound like, that sounds good. (laughs) I know, I I really like bread. So whenever I go by a fridge and happen to pass by, I usually try to find some bread to grab. (laughs) Should. Like, honestly, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but don't buy bread in Davis. Like, don't, just don't. (laughs) there's so much bread getting thrown away every single day like tons of it just go to a fridge and get some bread and it's good bread you know it's like delicious sourdoughs from village bakery in panera and it's like why would you spend money on that (laughs) you know it's out there you can find it for free really easily Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um Um, since you mentioned some businesses um i was wondering if, if like 
you're allowed to like mention what businesses like donate food to the fridges? Um, I don't know that. Yeah, the fridges in particular, um, the donations tend to be more like uh, either individuals, but we also do some recoveries from the Davis Farmers Market and Toledo Farms order of ours for years now. Um, and they, they supply a lot of produce that goes to the fridges and a lot of other people at the farmer's market as well. Night market works more directly with restaurants, um, picking up food at closing time. And we've got lots of partners. Sophia's often provides rice. Panera a couple of times a week has some bread and bagels and things for us. Pete's is donating. Uh, Burger Patch. Anya, am I forgetting any? I yeah, know I am. co-op. Co-op, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Village There's Bakery. Uh, Village Bakery donates this new business in town called Paneer. That's like super fancy. They donate on Fridays. So it's like you get this really delicious food on Fridays. Noah's Bagels is donating also on Fridays. And um, Zim's as well. Zim's sometimes donates, yeah. Um, Chickpea still sometimes gives us stuff. Um and let's yes. see who else also student farm uh provides food to the fridges but also gives donations through the davis uh family group at solano park they give them veggies and sometimes they have leftovers so those end up at night market slash fridges as well so there's also veggies um yeah so there's all kinds of things mostly bread <laughs> but, <laughs> and bagels. but um there's yeah, definitely no. a lot of variety but bread is a yeah. pretty safe bet that you'll be able yeah. to find some uh, speaking about bread i always like sandwiches I think a lot about <laughs> making lots of sandwiches um and it also, also leads me to the question of like what kinds of meals do you like to eat on like a very regular busy day well like, just like, yeah Talking about bread in particular, I like if the bread starts to get a little hard, if I don't make enough sandwiches, then I'll cube it and make some bread pudding. It's a nice little treat. That's one thing I like to do. Um, but um, Yeah. <laughs> On a busy day, I'll often just make a scrambled egg really quick just because it only takes like three minutes. Um, or a smoothie if I'm on the go, then I can just kind of have it in a cup, take it with me. Yeah. Um, I don't know, we, at my house, we um, have a student farm CSA, which is really great because we have a ton of veggies always. And we also get all this like rice and bread from night market. So it's always like, what can we make with the rice? No, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, and so we often make like uh, stir fries or... Um, we make like a ton of like lentils or beans, uh, just like, you know, like stews and stuff, um, which is really easy to make like in the Instapot. Yeah, using up those veggies and that rice. And then you can like just have it in the fridge for a couple of days and use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also make a lot of rice. <laughs> so always... Don't make rice. Also don't make rice. <laughs> just, just get it from night market. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, true. <laughs> seriously, seriously, like, it's funny because, like, I, like, the idea of making rice is, like, no. Why would I do that? <laughs> There's so much leftover rice every day. <laughs> like, just so much. Or, like, buying bread just seems crazy to me right now. <laughs> like, the other day, I actually bought a loaf of bread because I was out of town. And I was, like, what am I doing? This feels wrong. <laughs> so, like, they're really our options out there for getting this food wow you, there must be like so much rice as well dude seriously there's so much like yesterday I did night market and there like Sophia's had four giant um big rice cookers full of rice I could barely like fit it in our containers there was so much which is like they honestly they do a great job at and it's really cool that they collaborate with us it's just like hard for restaurants I think sometimes to be like oh we're you know gonna really be um skimpy about how much we make because they kind of need to um just make stuff 
Yeah, and so rice like, takes a while to cook, so they got to yeah. anticipate demand at a kind of farther back time. If somebody asks for rice and you're like, oh, okay, it'll be 40 minutes, they might yeah. not enjoy that as much. Yeah, and actually, I it's like really cool because I think most restaurants in Davis are actually really aware about food waste and don't have that much, which is actually really great. So um, like we we've gone around town a couple of times asking people, they wanted to donate and they were like yeah we don't actually have that much to donate because we don't have any leftovers at the end of the day which is cool um that's kind of surprising to me like i i normally would think there's like restaurants always have leftovers but it's, it's nice to know that there are, there are some out there that are um like more conscientious about food waste that's pretty good I think it definitely varies from place to place. Mm -hmm. Davis in general tends to be a relatively sustainable place. And that's one thing to think about is all the resources that are being invested into this food. So trying to minimize that waste is good. And then whatever waste there is, instead of it being waste, you can give it to something like night market and then it's no longer waste. It is food for more people to eat. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I really like the fridge and, and what you do at night market. It sounds like it sounds like something that's super useful anytime, but like, especially during COVID, it, it sounds like um, you help a lot of people get food that they otherwise wouldn't have. And I don't know if it helps restaurants, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I think it totally does. Like, um, I don't know. Every time I go to Sophia's and see the owner, he's like, oh my god, I used to feel so bad about throwing away this rice. And like, I'm so thankful that you guys are taking it from me now because like, <laughs> I used to feel so bad. Like people feel bad. People don't want to throw food away. And um, like at Panera, now they're so used to just giving it to us. One time, <laughs> my friend who was doing night market like got there super late. And uh, the guy was like waiting for him. Uh, and with the with the bread like I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to throw this away like I'm so used to just giving it to you guys now <laughs> like I couldn't throw it away so like I think they I mean yeah they they like not wasting food as well it's definitely something that weighs on people's minds I think who work in the food industry so I think it is helpful it's be a good good service for making sure that um food doesn't go to waste and restaurants don't have to feel bad anymore for having as much leftover things I suppose um let's see I, I think that's pretty much all the questions I really have but um and I do have any other things you, you wanted to mention um I think just kind of repeating and maybe you could put this at the beginning even, <laughs> but like that uh, night market happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 to 11 p.m. at 4th and C at Central Park. Um, there are people there with lights. You will see them. And uh, there are fridges at the MU and the Silo and the Food Co-op. And uh, Lucina Drive near Mace Ranch and the bike. It's Lucina Court. Oh, Lucina Court. Yes. Um, but so all these options are there and are available to people. So please take advantage of these resources. And um, yeah, that, that's it. Just remind people where we are when, when, and that they can come get some food and don't buy that. Yeah. <laughs> Anya, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we're always I'm just kidding <laughs> we always are here at, for anybody that wants to get some food we've got night market and preach and if anybody's interested in volunteering also feel free to reach out oh totally totally yeah our web pages are um preach.org and daviesnightmarket.org um and you can contact us at nightmarket at preach.org also Reach out, volunteer, hub community. Also, just take advantage of this resource. It's great. And thanks for sharing your social media and, and website. That was probably like the last thing I was going to cover. So thanks for sharing.
yeah, there's a lot going on. Definitely check out the website. We've got lots of information on there as well. But it's uh, it's been growing definitely during the pandemic. There's a lot more community bridges than we knew about a year and a half ago. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us and hope to see you at Night Market or come check out the fridge. Thank you for listening and don't forget to leave us some comments and questions. We appreciate the feedback. See the description for everyone's social media handles. You can follow the Frege on Instagram at Davis Frege, spelled D-A-V-I-S-F-R-E-E-D-G-E, as well as at Davis Night Market and at the Frege. Or check out their website at frege.org. Before you click away, our final episode of the Food and Basic Needs series will be a discussion with Kim Quach one of the FreeBytes app developers who helped create this free app to reduce food waste and address food insecurity. Subscribe to us to be notified when it comes out.